Hello, everyone. So thanks for coming. Um, my name is uh, Mike Francois. I am a solution architect. Uh, I'm living in Belgium, and, and I'm writing uh, a book, and then uh, solution architecture with Java. So today, I will uh, show you how you can split your monolith into microservices, um, how you can set CI, CD, uh, with uh, Jenkins, Kubernetes, Istio, and uh, how, you, how you can set that uh, in uh, one week uh, in your company. If you believe that, uh, I swear that <laughs> you are in the right place. So really the the, this talk is about the feedbacks, uh, what I met um, to my customers, and um, the problematic that they meet, um, and the problem of the time and everything um, on what we met generally uh, in our company. Um, because uh, everybody knows about the benefits of a distributed architecture, and every customer would like uh, to go there, but there is some things to do before, and everybody talks about technology, we have seen awesome things like Kubernetes and other things, but if everybody in the company are not aware about that, uh, you will not uh, get a success in this journey, because this is really a journey. So, <coughs> in, uh, in our case, I will talk about two cases uh, from the management and from developer, how they initiate to go to microservices. So, you know very well the context of Monolith, it's a big artifact, so every time when you would like to do um, a feature, even if it's a small one, you take so many times to do, to do it because you have to build everything, you have regression tests, you have a, um, functional tests and other things, uh, if you are lucky. Um, and other things, it's just um, operation team um, have only um, simple each check, you know, active ones. So they check only uh, some URLs and they don't have a, a good feedback about application. So this is our case generally I met when I go to customer and I swear that everything that I will talk about, it's a case that I met. So the first case, <coughs> it's from the, temp, uh, the management. Um, this is the boss, uh, he's coming to you. And um, he said that I have seen many presentations about microservices and uh, it's uh, awesome uh, approach so that I would like to implement it. But as expect as you are, you said, uh, we can't do that because we have to change everything in our organization. It's not only development team who could do that. But you both say, I don't, I don't want to, to hear about that. I'm uh, very aware about um, everything and I'm agree um, and uh, okay with our organization. So you will have to do that or we'll find uh, someone else. So uh, this is your boss and you have to do it. So. You, you will implement this, and uh, most of the time, you know, management teams think that you are um, a super developer, you know, you can fix bugs, you can implement features, and why not? You can migrate also uh, your monolith into microservices, and without to have a refactoring plan, you know? But you know that, as expect as you are, if you are alone to do that, you will get this result. Uh, you can do anything that you want, you can put every technology, if everybody is not aware about this, you will have this kind of result, you know, you will put some things, but you can't go, you can get benefits on what you implemented. So the second case, and you know it very well, is the hype driven development, you know, but what I like to talk about, it's more about hype man syndrome. And generally you can uh, recognize that because people talk with buzzword, or you can define, uh, you can recognize it with uh, bullshit bingo. Um, they, talk, they go to conference, they talk about um, a lot about this, and this is generally the loudest guy, you know, I like, uh, I like this one. Um, and I have a customer who, uh, they have this kind of configuration, a simple um, team, uh, five uh, people, they work with Maven and uh, Spring Core, and uh, they come back from conference, they say, and we want to go to microservices. They say, yeah, and they ask to the, uh, to the developers um, to implement a solution in six months with hexagonal architecture, Kafka, event sourcing, secure RS with API gateway in six months without knowledge. So it was crazy and uh, it was a nightmare for them. So they have to 
rollback and um, to do it by steps. And I will show you the approach that I'm using when I go to customer. So anyway, in both cases, uh, you do it because you have to do it. And uh, you push your first microservices in uh, production and congratulations, everybody is happy. So you have your first microservices with a simplest check, um, power monitoring. And um, what people don't think about when they start this journey on the side, it's after several releases, it looks like that. And it's very funny because uh, when you have a problem, you know, when uh, we ask a support, you looks like that because you have to log to each server, you have to scrap logs, and uh, you have to find patterns. So, yeah, definitely you looks like that, you know. I will not uh, yeah, to do that anymore. So, the approach, what I'm doing generally when I go to customer, um, and Martin for a talk about this also, this kind of things, it's uh, atom atomic evolutionary steps. What does it mean? It just every concern, every responsibility uh, in our context, in our company, we split it in blocks and in units, and we work on it um, step by step. So first of all, we do assessment. Um, so we check how, how it is. And uh, the other part that um, a lot of people don't think about is just the knowledge or so. Because every evolution, every change should be linked to a training plan. And <clears throat> to get grade on this, we work with maturity levels, and we can know where we can um, work efficiently to get a quick win and a quick fix. So based on that, first of all, we do a segregation of concern with a simple, uh, simple concern for every environment. We do a governance plan, and so uh, perhaps there is many things, but you we can see it um, after. Uh, you can check what I uh, what I said for the API uh, governance, for example. And also, uh, you have your training plan that uh, you have to link to involve uh, your team on each part because it's very important that you to link this and that everybody understand what you are doing and to maintain after because. If there is only one person who does that, you know it very well, it's a risk. So after, um, you define building blocks on your environment with responsibilities and you get maturity uh, on your context. And you know um, how you can set um, next technologies for next step. And you do it iteratively, you know. So <clears throat> many times customers tell me, yeah, well, we can do that, but we don't, have, we don't have time. And most of the time, uh, this is the, the key uh, of the problem. Uh, they don't want to get time on it. And so <clears throat> the best approach um, that I have got um, with experience is just to work with continuous improvement uh, in our workload. And what I like to talk about is about Kaizen. I have got a very good result with, uh, with this approach, and uh, we'll see after an example for uh, a huge company. And I swear that if your customer, if your company are not aware about backlog for continuous improvement, seriously, let it go. Because you can't do it by yourself, or you will spend so many hours to do that, and definitively, you are a super developer, you know? And <clears throat> there is also other customer um, who said, yeah, we don't have so much time, but uh, we can do it. Uh, another thing that I have seen in conference, you know, it's uh, agile. And uh, Mike Verman tweet one thing that's very interesting that I have seen uh, in many uh, companies. It just uh, scrum, it's a waterfall, but we don't have time to, for analysis. Kanban is a scrum, but we don't have the time for sprint planning. And uh, Agile means uh, we have no process, but we do use Jira extensively. And I swear that it is true. Mm. I have seen customers, uh, <coughs> product owner, scrum master, post it everywhere, and I swear everywhere. You know, when you enter in room, you have a post it. You know, on all world, it was. Uh, and you know, sometimes you have a ticket to fall down, so you take it and say, mm, it's done. So tomorrow the team will be happy, you know, because 
they would involve in that. But they do not let time for analysis uh, and to do a clear roadmap for, for this step. So, thanks to that, um, for example, um, for a huge company, I don't, uh, I don't uh, say the name of my customer, but um, th this customer um, uh, at the beginning did three release per year, 40 reboots per month, and after 70 tickets per week. After, with continuous improvement workload, uh, they have got uh, one release every two weeks, two reboot per month, and five tickets per week. What does it mean? It's just the team dedicated to support could work more on continuous improvement and could work on the part to go to microservices after when they are ready, when everything is stabilized. So this is a key uh, when you would like to go to microservices, it's just to know if you are ready and if everybody could be aware about that. And if you want to go to microservices, but you have to find quick wins like you are, you don't have a lot of responsibility in your environment, you can set things, tools, we can bring you many responsibilities efficiently, um, quickly. So for example, uh, I take uh, some services, I take some services and I think that we have a problem. Houston, we have got a problem? Next. So, <laughs> the, this line, um, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I know. So, um, we can put, for example, if you have a service, you have to abstract your, your environment. Okay. So, you got it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, um, you can put some tools to bring you many responsibilities. For example, if you don't have uh, centralized logging or um, security or simple, uh, if you have a simple e check, you can put API gateway and start to abstract your environment. Um, because the infrastructure and provisioning is the key thing for microservices. You know that, but this quickie is to say, Seriously, you have to think about it, and before to start to use technologies, we know that we like so much uh, to use uh, the last one. Uh, we have to think before if we are ready um, for, for that. So, for example, here you can put API Gateway, for example, Kong, and you get a traffic control, you can get authentication, uh, analytics is checked, you can do blue-green development, uh, blue-green deployment. Um, and uh, so with this approach, you can set it in uh, several weeks, you know, and uh, you got everything that uh, you missed before and you start step by step to go to, um, to microservices. So this is uh, the, the cookie, so I didn't have a lot of time to, to, to explain you everything about uh, the approach, what we do um, with our customer. But uh, you will can check our um, our um, our methodology um, about atomic evolutionary steps, and every time when I go to a customer, this brings us success to go to microservices or to involve the environment to be more reliable. Because there is one thing that uh, I said when I have a customer who asked me. Uh, who, who tell me I want to go to microservices, the first question is why you want to go to microservices? And most of the time, people can't, say, can't give me a good answer because they would like just to go there because they, they know that it's faster, reliable, but you can do it also with monolith. And sometimes it will be more efficient to keep your monolith, to work on it, refactor it, and perhaps after to go to microservices than to go to microservices um, directly without uh, to keep steps uh, before. So that's it. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>